Your balls will thank you. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Connor. We are here with One Leeds Fan Channel. The first time we're announcing One Leeds Fan Channel, where everything is one community, one family, one city, one Leeds. You get the motto. You get the mantra. We are back here with another video. It's your full and preview. But before that, me and Manscaped.com have been in contact because we want to sort you guys out a little deal. Now, what is the most important thing to a man? your balls. This is not spoken about on enough YouTube channels. It's about the hygiene and the health of a man's area. Sometimes you need a little bit of a trim. Of course you need a little bit of a trim. We all know that. We all understand that. So there's no point in hiding it. And this is the number one brand in the UK to help you with your trim. Now Manscaped is the only grooming shaving kit below the waistline in the UK, which is absolutely crazy. It's the only kit, the shavers out there, there's little bits of cream out there, but there is not a fully dedicated kit below the waistline for each and every gentleman. They sent me today the Perfect Package 3.0, which is available on their website with a huge One Leads Fan Channel discount. And let's go through the contents of the Manscaped package. Now inside, you will get the lawnmower 3.0, which is absolutely divine. Now the huge thing with the lawnmower was that, what I noticed specifically, was the fact that there's no nicks and nags. It's smooth, it's got advanced technology, and genuinely, I can tell you from experience, this thing is a lifesaver. And as well, what the beautiful thing about this is, is not only has it got LED lights as well, I need to stop pressing that button, but it has got a portable charger, which is extremely quick and very, very good for usage. You will also see the uh, the Crop Reviver, which is actually a ball toner. So, you know, if you go in round, you fancy a little spritz, tss, tss, finally to end the lovely package 3.0, you've also got this absolutely lovely um, sort of leather bag, which is, yeah, this is absolutely perfect. I need another one of these because mine's rubbish. Now, Manscaped was saying to me 5%. I said, no, I can't do the guys 5%. They said, what about 10%? I said, no, I can't do the guys 10%. 15, nah, not 15. Let's go one more. There is 20% off from this Manscaped product if you order it with one leads as the discount code. The link will be in the description below. And guys, as well, it's massive because you've got free shipping. I, I made sure they got that in there. There's free shipping, 20% discount code with one leads. Go check it out, will you? It's genuinely a lifesaver. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Connor here, the One Leads fan channel. The One Leads fan channel. How good does it sound? We are back with your Leads content. One fan channel, one community, whatever you want to call it. We're all under one roof. One big Leeds United roof. Um, and we are here and we, <laughs> we are talking about your Fulham game. Now, if you haven't already checked it out, please go check Leeds Around the World, where a certain man screens Bamos for a long time. Uh, yeah, it's a very good episode. Really enjoyed making it. Leeds Around the World, it's all about your fan prediction. It's all about your interaction with me. Give me your reviews, match day vlogs, previews for the game. So send me anything, not anything, but send me a a anything to do with Leeds whenever with regards to what I've just been talking about. Anyway. Uh, accidental partridge moment um, but yeah let's get on to it anyway but guys before we start this video obviously the video is sponsored by manscaped it is sponsored as well by ship bikes usa.com get all your customized details bikes to everyone's individual needs but fulham what a massive game a huge huge game in the calendar for leeds united one that we can't afford to muck up for me it's got to be a game where we, it's a must win already it's a must win um i did a chat with fulhamish as well on uh, on a specific you know on a specific specific video yesterday uh, a really good chat with dom talking to me about the things that he he thought that fulham did actually quite well in the first week held arsenal very firmly for the first sort of 40 45 minutes and then sort of collapsed but you know, you're always going to get that with top-class opposition. We saw that at the weekend. We scored, we scored, we scored, but Liverpool just kept coming back. It was relentless. And at the end of the day, we didn't win anything, did we? We didn't win the game. We didn't get three points. We then lost to Hull, um, albeit with 11 changes and none of the none of our first team featuring at all in that game. So, yeah, two losses consecutively. Um, and it'd be nice to get the, the morale of the squad up uh, for me. It'd be nice to obviously get a win. I think this is a game we have to win. I think it's a game we will win. We've got enough in our tank for me. And it's, uh, yeah, it's it's going to be, 
Oh, goodness. It's going to be... Uh, I think it's going to be a lot tougher for me. It's going to be really interesting to see Robin versus Mitrovic. Obviously, we saw the battle with Ben White and Mitrovic over two consecutive legs last year. Ben won that for me comprehensively twice. It's going to be Robin against Mitrovic for me, the main battle this weekend. Now, anyway, I watched... Fulham last weekend against Arsenal, I, I was impressed for the first bit of it. They looked resilient, they were pressing, they looked okay. I thought, though, Arsenal got to grip with the games... Uh, I thought, though, Arsenal got to grips uh, with the game far quicker than Fulham did in the second half. Fulham didn't really come out, to be honest. It was quite quiet on their end. There wasn't a lot of exuberance coming in. Arsenal just looked a lot quicker. They were winning the second balls, and they really turned it around, so... Yeah, I mean, it was quite pedestrian still when Fulham were on the ball, not breaking the lines quickly enough for me. And that's always been Fulham's problem for me, even in the Championship last year. Now, in our first game against Fulham, I thought Fulham were very, very good. I thought they pressed us extremely high and Leeds really had to deal with that. It was probably the first game in the season where I thought, oh, OK, OK, there is a bit of a step up in the Championship as well. Fulham were pressing us massively high. Leeds were make, making mistakes in that first game. It wasn't a great game from the neutral, but that first game, I actually thought Fulham edged it. The second game was something a little bit different. The first half, once again, Fulham bossed it, but the, the, the issue was they couldn't convert the chances. As I've said earlier, they were pedestrian in possession, and Leeds took grip of the game in the second half. We brought on Pablo Hernandez and we started breaking the lines. We started transitioning quickly. We started getting the wide players in, which Marcelo Bielsa's philosophy is all about, getting the wide players in. And we really picked Fulham apart in that in that second half and it probably should have been more than three. You watched the Arsenal game, you saw a Bamiyang, you saw William getting a hell of a lot of joy. You know, William had a brilliant game, but it was because Fulham were leaving them with so much room. You saw a Bamiyang with the third goal, had all the time in the world to pick out the top corner. You cannot give top players that amount of time and Fulham continuously kept doing that with two of the best players in the Premier League. So then when you look at the comparisons, you look at Leeds United, you look at how dynamic we are out wide, you look at Harrison, you look at Costa, you look at the joy they had when Leeds beat Fulham 3-0 at Ellen Road on the counter-attack. Are Fulham going to be continuously susceptible to Leeds' high press and Leeds' counter-attack? Question about it, we've seen Fulham obviously play 4-2-3-1, we've seen them play 4-3-3 at Leeds in the first game that we played Fulham where they did actually cause us problems. Is it going to be something similar? Or are Fulham going to have to, you know, are they going to are they going to change their their philosophy? Are they going to change the formation? Are they going to adapt? Because it didn't work versus Leeds United. As I keep saying, they were too pedestrian in possession. They had a lot of the ball and they looked dangerous, but nothing seemed to happen against Leeds United the second time. The first time, I would argue, they were a heck of a lot more dangerous in the 4-3-3 formation. It's going to be really interesting to see whether or not Parker switches it up against Leeds. For me, I actually think he will. Thing as well for me, once again, is obviously going to be the the bat line. I don't rate Fulham's bat line. We had the obviously the Fulhamish lads on the podcast and they were talking about how uh, you know, Don was saying that when you get teams running at the back line, it's a big problem. Now, you've seen Fulham apparently today after one fourth. You've seen them after another defender as well. Fulham needs centre-backs, so they're not going to get centre-backs in before this weekend. So this is a massive opportunity for Leeds to expose where Fulham are completely weak. And when we've got so much pace running, we're also confident on the ball. We've got the likes of Joe Gelhard, who's just played in the 23s, who looked mesmeric. He looked unbelievable. Who can come off the bench? You've got Cody Drama, who can come off the bench, who looked excellent as well you know, with all the others, I mean, these are just kids that I'm pointing out now. We're talking about just the depth in our bench, players who are ready to run at Fulham's back line, you know, players like Rodrigo as well. I think they're going to be in big trouble if Leeds start consistently running at their back line. And we saw that in the second half. We saw that when Pablo Hernandez started infiltrating the play in the cam role. It's going to be really interesting to see whether or not Leeds utilise Pablo from the start or Tyler Roberts from the start. I would actually argue for this game, I would actually start Tyler in the camp, then bring Pablo on. Do the exact same thing as we did against Fulham last time. Might not be great in the first half. That's up to Tyler. Tyler needs to grab the game by the scruff of the neck. Second half, Pablo comes on. That's not a reliance on him. You're giving him 45 minutes. He's not been overexposed, and then he can make the difference. But for me in that second half, last time, they did not know what to do with Pablo Hernandez when he came on the second half. My worry is, when Pablo starts from the start, I don't think he's as effective as when he comes on for the 45. In regards to Rodrigo, that's going to be a really interesting development. We saw him play 90 minutes in midweek. Don't think he had the best game, but at the same time, he didn't have a lot of serve. There wasn't a lot of quality around him. It was a drab game. It was an awful game. Leeds were awful. But we had a lot of kids playing out of position. So, you know, what do you expect? But at the same time, I, I would thoroughly expect Patrick Bamford to start. As I've said, I've been proved wrong in the past. I genuinely think now, you even saw that against Liverpool, when Patrick Bamford is brought off, 
Leeds do lose something. There's no denying it. There is no denying it. Yeah, he's not prolific. He's not clinical, which does my head in, as you guys have seen. But at the same time, when he comes off, Leeds 100% lose something. So I, I probably would personally start Bamford over Rodrigo. But I think this is where Leeds win this game for me is out wide. Out wide, we won it for me in the first game. It was Pablo's interplay. It was Click's interplay. Then you have the wide options in Costa and Harrison causing all sorts of problems in that second half against Fulham. So that's where we win the game for me. We're very dynamic. Joe Bryan's not the quickest. Dennis Adoy isn't massively great. For me, um, you know, Fulham were talking, uh, we were talking to the Fulhamish lads and they were saying they're expecting some of the new signings to come into the lineup, which is going to be very interesting. Would you rather your other lineups play against Leeds United, the former lineups, the ones who have experienced Marcelo Bielsa's high attacking press before, who've won a game against Leeds before in Dennis Sadoy and Joe Bryan, or would you rather some fully fledged new players from the continent come in against Leeds United or from academies or wherever they're from? It's going to be a baptism of fire for those players if they come in. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see which option Scott Parker goes for. But for me, guys, it is going to be uh, Leeds 2, Fulham 1. I think it's going to be tighter. The battle between Robin and Mitrovic is going to be very, very exciting to watch. But Leeds need to bounce back now. Obviously, we haven't got a win. Fulham haven't got a win either. Obviously, they actually won the game midweek, so they've got a win, I guess, if you're, if you're counting the cup. But Leeds need a win. We need, obviously, the, the minimum we need to get to is 37 to 40 points to avoid relegation. And that we need to win tomorrow. These are teams that we should be beating. You know, no arrogance there. We should be beating Fulham. Um, I'm going to go with a 2 1 Leeds win. I think it's going to be tight, but I think we'll get it over the line. Guys, as well, you'll be absolutely delighted to know. And uh, yeah, it's a bit unfortunate, to be quite honest. But the prize winner last week for the £100 competition didn't come through. So, what we're going to do this week weekend is make it a rollover so not only is the 100 pounds available this week you're cutting that off there is 200 pounds available this week for you to follow the same guidelines as last week with a different question so as always i need you this time to tell me what bike is on the contacts page the contacts page we had a bit of confusion last week about the about section it's the contacts page okay on ship bikesusa.com's contacts page so let me know screenshot that and also guys what i'll need you to do is screenshot the fact that you subscribed to one leads fan channel and as well i need you to answer this question so the question is going to be guys who is going to be leads first goal scorer at the weekend dependent on if we do get a goal scored i think we will so that's why i'm asking this question if we don't it's going to roll over to 300 quid next week so that's it guys the screenshots of the two previously obviously you you screenshot the bike you screenshot the fact you subscribed then i need you to screenshot your comment your answer to the question and send it to one leads fan channel at gmail.com the link will be in the description guys have a lovely night I'll see you in a bit.